Hello out there. It's the second edition of Divine Positioning. The program is Divine Connection and um, we'll be bringing it to you on a weekly basis. The last time I came to you, we talked about Divine Positioning, how we can be divinely positioned for our partner or for purpose because in life, we all must have a purpose. Without purpose, we may not be able to move to the next level. My name is Omolola Famuywa, and this is Divine Connection, a program brought to you to encourage you, especially those that are mature singles, to wait in the Lord and be optimistic that very soon their own partner, their own man, their own woman will come their way. So we're looking at the second part of divine positioning. Last uh, time we spoke about, uh, we used uh, Rebecca as a point of reference, how Abraham's servant went in search of a wife for Isaac and all that. This week I'll continue from where I stopped. One thing I want you to realize is that God has the power to break men's requirements. I talked about men having requirement for cup size, for backside, for uh, the lady has to be light complexion or, or has to be really dark complexion, glossy and all that. God can break that requirement down. And I am, a, 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 I mean, I'm a living testimony that that is possible. I tell my husband all the time that God broke his bone in order to compel him to submit to God's own will as opposed to his own will because he had so many things he wanted and that made him wait for so long. I mean, you wait till the point where you now feel like I don't need a wife anymore. I don't need a man anymore. Okay. But God is able to do that. God is able to compel you to accept the person he's bringing your way for your own good. From the journey, Abraham's servant must have been so tired that he saw only what God wanted him to see. I mean, he could have been looking here and there, but he was focused. He, wa he saw only what God wanted him to see. A woman who could satisfy his thirst and save his animals from dying. I mean, there would have been other women. Why Rebecca? God made him focused in her search for a mate. And really, should we be searching? When God is there to do the searching for us, all God needs to do is orchestrate a divine connection between that man, between that woman, so that it's easier for us to make that step, to accept. What God did in the Garden of Eden was just to bring the woman and then the man had to proclaim, this is the bone of my bone. This is the bone of my bone. Adam was still drowsy from the supernatural surgery. But when he saw, he pronounced, he announced it. Oftentimes when a man meets a woman, a woman meets a man, they spend five years, ten years trying to figure it out. God has brought you together. What else do you want to figure out? Start the journey and let God move you. That is so important. Okay? So before Adam's human senses kicked in, he made the pronouncement. Oftentimes we're so much into ourselves. Oh, you're thinking I'm so beautiful. How can I end up with this guy who is so ugly? Guess what? God did not create any ugly person. Situations may have made us ugly, but God did not create ugly people. He did not. So you meet the person and you think, oh, you're so pretty. You can't end up with this person. Picture two years from now, God forbid you have an accident. The man comes to you, maybe partially blind, and you know for sure this is God's will for you, but you say to yourself, I, how can I, as beautiful as I am? When I was in high school, we had a similar experience. Pretty girl, very, very pretty. Even girls acknowledge that this one is pretty. She had an accident, scars all over her face. The surgery necessitated so, uh, 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 um, the, the, the scar necessitated, or rather the, the bruises, the accident necessitated surgery, which was done all over her face. Her face became scared. She went through an emotional crisis of redefining, of reaccepting who she was because they knew her, unfortunately, as scars. 
and the old old eye cannot be pulled off when a guy comes to ask, oh, this is what I used to look like. Guess what? It's what you look like now. So it really shouldn't be difficult for us to accept. The truth is, once you let your human senses or your religious doctrine dictate, you will never be in a position to trust God and accept his will. You bring someone your way, you know immediately, this is who God wants me to be with. You have a peace in your mind. But then you're looking at his wallet. You're looking at his car. What kind of car is he driving? What degree does he have? I have a friend who would not have anything to do with any guy who didn't have a first class. She doesn't really care much about whether you're in the sciences or the arts. But for you to even come to her, for you to go to her, you must have a first class. If you don't, she doesn't even want to listen to you. That is not what will determine whether the man will make you happy. It's not the size of his wallet or his degree or his education that will determine your happiness. Today, women are told not to ask men out, but obviously Rebecca initiated the relationship by befriending the servant, either by first, either by first greeting him or by offering to give water, there's nothing wrong in you initiating friendship. There may be something wrong in you begging to be married. Let the man do the running after you. Or for you to say, oh, can we have a drink? Or, oh, how are you? Say hello. Say hi. Some men have been so blinded by whatever they are going through that they may not initiate that first hello. They may not initiate that first interaction. It's up to you. When you sense something in your spirit, you have a feeling, that initial feeling towards somebody. Go ahead and say hi. Rebecca did the same thing. She must have smiled. She didn't go to him frowning. If she did, I bet Abraham may have said, no, 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 don't even bother. Not with this tightness in your face. I do not know if it is a sin to ask a man out, but I do know there is a doing on the part of the male and a doing on the part of the female. Rebecca could only follow Abraham's servant after she said, I do. You would recollect, I mean, if you're conversant with that story, if you know that story well, even after all was said and done, even after Abraham's servant went with her home and all that, the parents still had to ask, are you ready to go with this man? The parents didn't want her to go immediately. They wanted to keep her. So there's a doing on the part of the female and there's a doing on the part of the male. Do you know how to respond to what your man wants? Or can you adequately position yourself to identify and respond to the link to that man? A Yoruba song says, That is, anyone you're privileged to help. That is your second person. That is your mate. That is your friend. Anyone that is divinely connected to you. That is the person you should look to for help. There's so many people around you who may be able to help you in the area of um, marital, having marital peace. But they may not be God's choice for you. So look out for that man who has been sent to you. Who is God's will. The song is an is a, a direct allusion to the Samaritan story. But indeed, as Christians, we should be open enough to trust and accept God's will. Reverend Dominic Apollo shared the story of how as a Christian, he started dating his friend. She was not a believer, but he knew in his heart. Even at 18 years, he was so sure that he loved her and wanted to be with her for the rest of his life. His fleshly instinct of what is right and wrong as far as being a believer later made him be, decide to break the relationship. But because he chose to surrender all to God instead of forcing the girl to accept salvation, that very week he chose to let her go, the girl became saved. Today, they are still married. God may have a reason for choosing an unbeliever, a poor fellow, an educated fellow, a skinny fellow as his choice for you. Isaac was laid back as far as I'm concerned. I mean, a man who wouldn't do anything about his situation, he was already 40. He didn't do anything. He was passive. Yet, 
He was God's choice for Rebecca and his life truly, truly came into focus because she accepted him and because he in turn accepted her. The moment she began to take God's place by trying to work out God's will, she missed it. She was working out God's will as far as her children were concerned. Oh, I love this more. Oh, um, this is what I... She, that was where she missed it. She didn't miss it in the area of knowing God's will. She didn't miss it because God told her, the children in your womb are twins. The senior, the first to come out, will serve the junior. But then she tried to work it out. Isaac and Rebecca forgot the place of God in their marriage, so they tried to upturn God's will. Even though it seemed like Rebecca got away, they both lost the unity of their family and created a rancor, but God's will prevailed. There was a rancor. Isaac had made up his mind to bless Jacob, or to bless Esau, rather. But Madame Rebecca upturned it, used her strategy as a woman to upturn that decision. But what happened at the end of the day? God's will was done. Rebecca was a woman of faith, yet like Sarah, she doubted that God's prophecy concerning her favorite son would come to pass. Are you doubting that God can give you that man as long as he is God's will for you? If he leaves, he's coming back. If he does not yield to God's will, he would find crisis along his path. It's not a cause, but when you leave God's will to pursue other things, there is definitely going to be crisis in your path. But when you listen to God's will and go with him, it doesn't mean there won't be challenges, but he promised in his word. That be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Isaac was a man of faith. It takes great faith to allow his servant be the one to choose your wife. But he tried to do what seemed right in the face of tradition, even though it went against God's pro prophecy. What has God prophesied concerning you? Have you rationalized that it cannot happen with the man God has brought your way? Don't be in a hurry. God can make it happen. I know of a lady who said to me concerning the man God connected her to, said, he's so dark complexion. His, his darkness is not even the ebony, the glossy kind of dark. You know, you, this one is just charcoal dark. <laughs> and then she complained about the nylon he brings to church. That, ah, you need to see the nylon bag. She didn't even call it nylon bag. She said nylon bag. <laughs> that was how bad she rated you know, the way he carried himself. But at the end of the day, I said to her, if the nylon bag is the problem, why don't you buy him a suitcase? Brethren, fast forward 10 years from that time, people are now asking the man, what did you see in this woman that made you marry her? Why? She's now fat after a child. You know, she gained weight. She's not being able to lose that weight. I know, and the man... You know, now you look at the man, you say, oh my God, you really must, uh, married a handsome man. That did not happen then. It happened after she accepted God's will. So soon after she accepted God's will, the man got a beautiful job. His life turned around within a year of her saying, I do. Within a year of her saying, what are your fears? God knows your fears. God knows what you want. And trust me when I say he will not give you what will not enable you to fulfill purpose. Pastor Grace O'Connor they shared how she almost did not marry her husband because it did not fit into God's prophecy for her at that time. God's prophecy for her that she would go abroad, you know, she would go around the world and all that. She had an alternative and that alternative fitted in perfectly. So she went, wanted to go with the alternative, but thank God. Thank God for pastors. Thank God for mentors. Thank God that she eventually trusted God. And the man, which she termed the village man, has helped her to fulfill a vision today. Are you waiting for God to change that man or woman's situation before you go ahead? Please don't wait. Because by the time his situation changes, he also does not want you anymore. Don't wait. Don't say until he does this. Until he does that. 
Let God's will be done. Let God move the relationship. Let God drive the relationship from mere relationship into marriage. Let that be God's work. It is not in your place to help God. All you need to do is trust and obey. You know that song? Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. That's a place of inquiry from God. Rebecca went to inquire of the Lord, even though she was prayerful. After not finding answers for 20 years, Concerning her not being able to conceive, she went to the Lord and asked, Why wait for 10 years? Why wait for 20 years? Why wait for 30 years? Go to God and ask, Who is that man you are sending my way? Wherever he is, definitely he's been born. He's not just going to be born. So the man is alive. The man is somewhere. Pray that God will divinely connect you. Rebecca accepted her husband's headship and oddly asked her husband to pray for her. Do you pray with that person God has sent your way? Do you let him know when you have an issue that is bothering you? Do you take it that we're yet to be married, so um, no discussing my problems? Yes, you don't want to pack him up with all your problems. You don't want to suffocate him with all your problems. But you can talk about it. You can pray together. Courtship is what is encouraged for Christians. Because in courtship, all you're doing is planning the wedding. Planning the marriage. It's not a time for you to look at his nose and say, I don't like the shape of his nose, so I don't want to go with him. No, that's not what courtship, that's what dating is all about. Dating is test running. See if it will work. Whether this, will, this is the man. Checking him out. Like you buy, you know, a shirt in the store, in the mall. And then you say, oh, let me take home and try it out. Or let me try it out, you know, in their dressing room and see whether it fits. That's what dating is all about. And that is not for mature singles. Years have been wasted. Now is the time to focus. A friend challenged me, actually. And that was why I became focused. She said, you went to get one degree in America. You came back with two because you were focused. Now is the time to focus on getting a mate. And I said to myself, this is a challenge. And I took it up. I wanted to pray the, say this prayer point. Lord, teach me to seek you first so that all other things can be added unto me. And that is the root of it. We need to seek God first. We need to be focused on the kingdom, on God. Unknown to me, God connected me immediately and accepted the assignment of establishing divine connection. Eliza is unnamed in Rebecca's story for a reason. The glory of your divine connection or connector is God's. God, I mean, he wasn't named. He said, Abraham Sava, what was his name? His name was not mentioned because the glory belongs to God. But when you or the connector carries out God's assignment very well, there will be celebra celebration to justify the means. God positioned me to dress my Eden, help me to take it from a fallow ground to a fruitful garden. Wherever you meet him or her is your Eden. You can't go back to that Eden, but wherever you meet that person is your Eden. And you want God to position you to dress that garden. Help you to take it from a fallow ground to a fruitful garden. God apportioned Adam what he was supposed to do. Do this. Do that. The same way, when God sends you your man, it may not be the big picture you are thinking about, but you can help him become that big picture. You can work with him and call God to help you. Rebecca lost her place in history because she tried to help God fulfill his will. Probably it would have been Abraham, Rebecca, and Jacob. Instead of, you know, they say, oh, uh, the, the God of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He could have been Abraham, Rebekah, and Jacob. The rich she had to endure was her husband's passive, laid-back nature. But if God brought her to it, she should have trusted him to bring 
path through it. A lot of us feel like, ah, this husband is too laid back. Maybe if he's sharp, he will be running after three, four women. God may, I mean, God knows why he's laid back. Don't use that as a reason to want to, you know, cut him off in decision making or do things on your own or feel that, oh, he's too slow. The first ones, while you are seated, they are having a go at your friends, the sharp ones. You must learn to take a risk on people and connect with them, not because they fit into what you want, but because God says, go. You must learn to connect. How does he say go? He may lead you to him. He may lead her to you. He may lead you to the person through somebody else. Many of the opportunities in life come on the back of divine connections. For you to connect and maintain the right relationships, you must place a value on people and respect them. When you do, you will get the best out of them. Don't manipulate people to become what you want them to be or to fit into your own yardstick. Appreciate and love them just as they are because we are created regardless of our flaws as masterpieces, different and special. Created differently, but created specially. Don't try to constrict that man into your own image. No, he was created in God's image, not your image. And it's easy to do that. You say, oh, he's a Christian, but he doesn't go to my church. I want a man that goes to my church. So you are compelling him to come to your church. You are compelling him to pray the way you pray. You are compelling him, you know, to, to fast the way you fast. Have you now become his God? Have you now become a God? What is the place of God in your relationship? We have to constantly pray that God will divinely connect us and allow us, help us to act, accept his will. It's very challenging. If God points to a man in, in a wheelchair as your, as your husband, it is very, very challenging to say yes. I know a woman who suddenly found herself abroad. How? Her husband is one that would not have been thought of as ever making it. Yet, even though he's visually impaired, he kept getting promotions upon promotions, and his recent promotion was to come and walk abroad. And they said, bring all the children. It may not have happened with a man that has both eyes and sees clearly because he not only sees the good he sees the bad he sees the ugly and his sight may drive him to go with them she's married a marriage is stable she's happy and she's enjoying the blessings yes people may look at her and pity her ah Mashio, sorry your husband is blind Hey, the problem is yours. She is enjoying. Because when you go with God's will, the blessings abound. The blessings abound. Every risk, especially of a man or woman who appears like they do not measure up to human litmus, litmus test, comes with an opportunity for blessing, which is just what I've narrated to you. Within your divine positioning is divine grace to enable you reap the benefits. You need to be positioned in the right relationship like Ruth was divinely positioned in the life of Naomi so that she can meet Boaz, who was in the ge genealogy of Jesus Christ. Remember that Rebecca was positioned by the well so she can meet the servant who linked her with God's purpose of making her a matriarch. Esther was divinely positioned to redeem her people. Rahab was divinely positioned to redeem, to help the spies in exchange for protecting our entire family from a deadly massacre. Are you divinely positioned for purpose? Are you divinely positioned for purposeful living? Go into yourself and ask that question. Are you positioned? 
You want to marry a man with PhD. How are you planning? But even after all the plan is done, would God sanction your desire? Yes, he said in his word that will grant us the desires of our heart. But don't forget, every time we read the Lord's prayer, we say, let thy will be done. Let thy will be done. We say it all the time. We say it all the time. And we are allowing God's will to be done in the area of marriage. My vision is to see more mature singles, a higher percentage of mature singles connecting in marriage, getting married, and reaping the joy of marriage, knowing the joy of coming into that partnership, into that institution orchestrated by God. That is my desire. And that is why today I'm sharing with you to divinely position yourself. How do you position yourself? By praying. Pray to God to know his will. At times we are so hung up on what we want, on the list we have written out for ourselves, that when the man comes, we don't even notice him. Yorubas have a saying, Baba Jijube Keni Buruku Koja, Afai Mokeni Reno, Mati Koja Lokato Lajua. If we close our eyes for evil people to pass, who knows? The good ones may just have passed as well before we open our eyes. Brethren, divinely position yourself for that man, for that woman. Ask God to open your eyes of understanding to who that man is. And ask God to help you accept. There may be one or two things about him that you do not want to accept. Maybe his health. Maybe his wealth. Maybe his education. Maybe he doesn't speak flawlessly. You speak Queen's English and he speaks the, the village English. Ask God to give you the courage to accept his will. Because when you accept his will, at the end of that road that looks so bleak, at the end of that face that looks like, oh, can I, can I stand by this man? At the end of that grammar that is not flawless, it's peace. If only you can trust God. If only you can trust God. If you were presented a diamond in rags, you would have thrown it away before realizing that the rags was just superficial. The real thing is what is in that person. What do you want? What is the real thing you desire in marriage? It is peace. It is love. It is joy. It is understanding. And God can give you all that. Brethren, I leave you with this prayer point. Pray that God will break that man or that woman to accept you. Lord, break me to accept him. Pray that God will break that person to accept you and break you to accept him or her. And the Lord will do that for you. I trust that God will do that for you. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for listening. I want to hear good news from you. I want you to go with courage. I want you to make a decision today that you're going to let God choose your mate for you. He did it for those of old. He can do it for you. And together, we will celebrate the joy of marriage. Don't forget, you can connect with us on Divine Connection at Facebook. If you go to your Facebook, just write in Divine Connection. Put DC in parentheses. You can join online. You can also go to www.dckiss.blogspot.com in order to read some of our previous articles or listen to some of our videos. It is well with you, and I trust that very soon, God will connect you in marriage and to purpose. Your life will not be lived without purpose. Thank you, and God bless you.